Hey guys, I'm uh, on my way down to Alabama to visit my friend John Hart, who recently moved out of Nashville, kind of out in the sticks, if you will, and uh, he has kind of an interesting perspective as to why he left Nashville, and uh, I want to kind of go talk to him and interview him and get his take on things. <music> Thank you for tuning into this video. As I previously mentioned in one of my clips, I'm down here in Alabama today interviewing uh, one of my really good friends, John Hart. And so I already know a lot about this guy. He's uh, one of my favorite people, just a man of character and integrity. Um, I know a lot of stuff already, but I'm going to just ask some general questions just to kind of get um, more of a description of him because he's got kind of an interesting and unique perspective on uh, the music industry and so I wanted to come down here and kind of uh, capture that. So John, how are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks yeah. for coming down here. Yeah, Thanks absolutely. for having me. Yeah, This is fun. So uh, like where are you from originally? So originally uh, from Jackson, Mississippi. Um, I grew up in Jackson, lived there till I was like 10, and then lived in Oxford, Mississippi for two years, and then moved back down to the Jackson area, uh, right outside of Madison for like high school. Awesome. So at, I guess, when was it or what kind of sparked your initial interest in getting into songwriting and performing as an artist? That's a good question. Um, the songwriting thing didn't really take hold until I was probably I think I was 16 when I wrote my my first song my first love was drums and I that was what I played kind of growing up and what I was always initially interested in and spent a brief a very brief stint in middle school doing like the the band like the drum line thing and uh, that was a little too structured for me so I, I started play and I remember it was I think it was like Thanksgiving one year when I was like 15 and we went to go visit uh, some of my cousins and one of my cousins had started playing the guitar and he was a little bit older than me and I think it was a pride thing I was like I can't I can't be shown up on this so I went home my dad had a guitar and, and he played and so I started playing after that when I was like 15 and then yeah like I said I think I wrote my first one when I was 16 and once I wrote that first one that's when it kind of grabbed me yeah I think I think for me too as a guitarist my my start out was also a little bit of a pride thing too it seemed like my uh, cousin in Louisiana had just gone down the street to take a guitar lesson and when he got back immediately I was like you need to show me exactly what you learned so he taught me the two chords C and A minor and I just started like playing those back and forth just over and over again and just had this hunger to just get better at that so that's really cool yeah so i i will add a little context here since i know john hart pretty well so i know you used to be uh like a literal cowboy and then you went on to teach full-time in inner city schools in jackson so how did you go from doing those two things uh to to eventually deciding to become a a full-time songwriter and artist. So, and I'll, I'll say this cause to answer the last part, because this ties into what you just asked, the last part of your first question. So I wrote my first song when I was 16, but the thinking through like being an artist really didn't take hold of me until I was probably 22-ish. Hmm. Because in that interim time, yeah, there was a, I rodeoed in high school and broke horses for people. And there was like a significant portion of my life 
during that time where I thought that that's how was, what I was going to be doing for the rest of my life and that music would just kind of be, um, I guess, tangential to that or would just be kind of a, a passion slash hobby type deal. But I've also learned about myself over the years that I'm not, I'm not the type of person that like can kind of let hobbies be hobbies. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just realized that like music kind of had this different kind of hold over me even then, than horses did at the time. Um, and I just kind of, I realized that as I was kind of getting to the tail end of my rodeo stuff and healing from some injuries that there were just other things I wanted to do in life. And music was kind of at the top of that, but I also realized that I wanted to teach and I felt called to teach and I would have done it anyway, but I did have a scholarship in college that paid for my last two years of school in full to go teach in an underserved area. So I did that my first two years out of college, but I went into that knowing that after those two years, I wanted to like really give the music thing a run. I've always kind of had this fear in the back of my mind of like looking back when I'm like 40 or 45 and like having all these songs and never actually having really gone after it. So um, I just kind of kept writing and started to feel it out. I put out a rap album before I started doing what I'm doing now. (laughs) So I kind of felt it out with that, decided that's not what I wanted to do, and then that's when I moved to Nashville, and I was like, all right, I'm going to commit to this fully. Man, that's awesome. That's that's quite an interesting story and just kind of perspective as to how you got to where you are now. So how, how long were you in Nashville almost five years to the day okay yeah it was um i guess it would have been eight february of 2018 to february of like february 1st of of 23 so almost five years to the day yeah so during that time you saw nashville as i moved to there in 2016 i saw just a ton of rapid change to the city it Mm -hmm. seemed like it just blew up and it's continually expanding uh more so than I could have ever uh, imagined. Uh, so that being said, like, what are some kind of, now that you're not living in Nashville, what are some, I guess, of the reasons that, I, w- I wouldn't say made you, but made you, f- give you the feeling of, I need to, I need to leave. Yeah. Um, there were, there were several, um, you know, I, for, the first couple of years, I think being in Nashville was very necessary. I don't think it's necessary for everybody, but I also think it's probably more necessary for some people than they actually realize. Um, you know, initially, like the competition was really good. I think I told this to somebody yesterday, actually, but being in an, in an environment like Nashville where there's, I mean, just like the best players and a lot of the the best artists and just general talent that you're going to find in the country and in a place where everybody, well, not everybody, but like it feels like half the city's doing music, something yeah. in music and really devoting themselves to it. So it creates this pretty competitive environment in a good natured way, but it just kind of, it, it forces you to reckon with like, do I really want to be here? Mm -hmm. Um, Or do I really want to be doing this? Am I cut out for this? Um, So that was good initially, but eventually that turned into the more I got steeped into the culture of how the music scene works, the less enchanted I became or the less enchanted I was with it. Um, Because while the competition is initially good, I think for me it, it led to realizing that a lot of that competition is not really centered on musical merit. Like it can be like music plus something else. It can be music plus your aesthetic, plus who you know, plus what producers you've worked with, plus what genre box you fit in. Mm -hmm. And that made it hard for me to relate to people in this scene a lot of the times. And so that's a long-winded way of saying that what really kind of drove me to consider moving and then leaving 
was the realization that I didn't think I needed to be there from a social standpoint to make it happen. Because when I when I realized that, the city like lost its appeal overnight. All the traffic, yeah. how expensive it is to live there, not being able to get outside, um, mm-hmm. just all of that lost its appeal. And that was kind of the driving factor, if that, if that makes sense. Yeah, and I, I definitely get this sense of just it's 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 almost a a healthy and unhealthy balance if you can if you can make it work but this constant feeling like you always have to be hustling you always have to be growing which in a in one sense that's a great thing i love being around people that are motivating me and you know constantly pushing me to be better as a musician as a person just overall but it can also be exhausting when you feel like you always have to be living up to this certain standard. So, yeah, that was tough for me for a while too, because I never knew what I was supposed to be hustling on. Yeah, yeah it was like, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I was, I was looking at you, you know, you always hear about people talking about how much they're hustling and how hard they're working. And it's like, I mean, we talked about this and I talked about it in a recent video on my channel is like, we toured and for the record, Landon, plays with me sometimes as well he's a phenomenal guitar player and um, has played with me for the last couple years but he toured with me a little bit in the fall and I mean he also uh, does booking for me as well and for some other artists and is is great at that as well but he put a lot of time and so he kind of saw how this whole thing worked and played out and I basically we toured hard in the fall and I lost a bunch of money Um, just because the other thing about Nashville with the competitive environment is that unless you're 20 years old and just getting started you typically have to pay people to go with you and Mm -hmm. that's that's guaranteed money regardless of how much money you make playing the shows so that like that was always confusing to me because when people were talking about how they're hustling i'm like well you know unless you're playing big shows you're probably going to go out of pocket to play them so it's like i don't know if hustle means like you're just constantly sending emails out to people or constantly trying to play shows or constantly demoing stuff, but the demo thing to spend lots and lots of time on it didn't always make sense because if you don't have a budget to go record those songs, it didn't feel very efficient to me. Which it, it probably is more efficient than I'm and, and more important than I'm willing to give it credit for, or than I. But. The point being is that, like, I never really knew what the hustle thing meant, so it was always confusing, yeah. and I felt like I was never doing enough, but I didn't really know what I was supposed to be doing. Right. It's absolutely a a grind. You know, it's just... I found that the most helpful thing is to find people, I guess, that are doing what I eventually want to do and just asking them questions and just kind of getting their perspective on a lot of things. Yeah, and I figured out now that, like, what, what really encouraged me to want to move was when I figured out what that grind looks like for me and mm-hmm. how I want to build this. That was the impetus to to move. Mm-hmm. That's what really the, the, the catalyst that got me to move is that, you know what, I think what my grind looks like is right now is not playing shows, is not taking the risk of going out of pocket to, to play shows to small rooms and just the the mental and emotional tax of promoting the shows, asking people to come out, the anticipation, the disappointment, if it doesn't turn out how you want to. So I was like, you know what? My grind and my hustle, because I've got a lot, a lot of songs that I want to record and get out, is to hold away, to put my head down, and just to work every day making content, getting better at the recording stuff, writing, and being able to, like, act on ideas. That was one thing that was tough about being in Nashville is that in a city that big with a lot of distractions and, you know, potential things that you could be doing at any given time, it was hard for me to act on ideas when I had them. Heck yeah. So that's where my grind I think is now is like when I have those ideas, being able to act on them in the moment and being consistent with that day in and day out. Right on. So the, the content that I've been posting on this channel uh, recently has been – mainly geared towards sidemen, you know, people in the music industry as musicians that are trying to make it, you know, whether that be getting a, a touring gig, being in the studio, both, as as uh, I've covered in some of my recent videos, you kind of have to do a lot of things as a musician to make ends meet. So that being said, you as an artist, what kind of uh, attributes are you looking for in the people that you hire to take out on the road with you? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, the the first thing 
that I look for above anything else is character because I think if that's if that's what's prioritized in the other things that will that are required for somebody to be a good fit in your band for the artist like those things will fall into place um, I've I've told I've told you this before finding musicians is like one of my least favorite things about music it's like once <laughs> I have my people yeah like I want to keep them around um, just because the whole like talking about the money stuff and wondering whether they're actually going to be prepared when they show up and mm -hmm. how they're going to gel with everybody else is just kind of like stressful I like to keep my people with me but I will say this I remember and I'm going to gas Landon up for a second. I'm not just saying that because he's sitting here. But I remember Landon started playing with me about two years after I got to town. And when I was just first getting my feet wet in Nashville, I had some guys that were good guys that were playing with me. But um, there was a couple times where they just flat out weren't prepared. And then there was one time that they backed out. We had a, I had a weekend run of shows out of state booked, and they backed out two days before, never offered to find any subs for me, um, didn't give any reason, like, why they mm -hmm. backed out. They were just like, hey, sorry, I don't think we're going to go. So I was, like, not in a great place with kind of my view of um, hired musicians. And I remember Landon and um, a guy named, a good friend of ours named Jeff Wood, who I think, Jeff recommended you. No, uh, so Jeff had a Jeff has a good friend uh, who he was gonna get to play guitar, and then this guy, who's also a friend of mine, was like, "Hey, uh, I wanted you to, wanted to offer this to you if you're interested." Um, and we ended up playing that uh, that frat party thing and oh, uh, yeah. at uh, Mississippi State opening yeah, yeah, for the yeah. Brook yeah. in the Bluff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, so I reached out to Landon and he asked me about thirty questions before he played the <laughs> he played the first show. But no, I remember the point of that being is that I remember with with Jeff and with Landon after having like some I don't know like PTSD I guess from like bad experiences <laughs> with other players when they showed up we had never met and the first time that we met was to run through songs before the shows and I was like this is what professionals are like um from a from a playing standpoint from a character standpoint from just like being punctual um so if i were to kind of put that in a nutshell like character first because you just don't want to be we have everybody especially the hired guys more than the artist but have just horror stories about being on the road with people that mm -hmm. are not good hangs or that party too hard on the road or um are just kind of miserable to be around but they're good players um, and that's just not a recipe for long-term success. So, again, character at the top. And that's with the assumption that there's the musical abilities there. You know, like you mm -hmm. do want to make sure um, that, like, your playing is where it needs to be before you offer yourself um, to, to play for other people. But character, playing ability, um, being on time for stuff. And then here's a, a huge one. Landon and I talk about this a lot is if you are a player and you're looking to get, to get hired, just communicate well with people mm -hmm. communicate. Like if, if an artist is reaching out like about playing with them, just text them back, make sure that you, uh, don't like leave them on the hook or make them follow up. And that's just general. I mean, that's not just music. I mean, that's just yeah. general business stuff. I mean, like if you're, if somebody from a company and you're not in music, you know, somebody from a company wants to hire you and they reach out to you, like just be, be punctual with and timely with how you communicate. But those four things I would say are, are the most important. And I mean, like, I feel like we have the credibility to talk about it because pretty much everybody that's been playing with me for the last four years we're all really good friends and it's it's the same people i mean i haven't added a whole lot of new people to the arsenal yeah and i'll i'll add on to that point a little bit as a as a side man it can be uh stressful sometimes if you need to sub out a gig last minute or something because like i have people that i reach out to that i know that are going to be reliable uh, have good character and just do a fantastic job uh, but a lot of times the the main people that I would call are not available, so I have to maybe branch out a little bit and take a chance 
And it can be stressful sometimes because you're always going to be held uh, liable or you're going to be looked upon as, oh, hey, like he gave me a really great recommendation for someone and that person absolutely killed it. You know, so-and-so is great because they recommended a really good person. But also, if you recommend someone that ends up being really bad, say they show up, they don't know the parts or they get too hammered on stage or something just goes wrong, then it also reflects on you. So it's just something to think about and to always make sure to do your due diligence. John Hart mentioned that I asked a gazillion questions is because I want to make sure that I know what I'm getting into and just, you know, if I have something scheduled the day after his gig, I want to make sure that I'm back in time and can meet all of my prior obligations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's, I mean, Landon's done a really cool job the last few years of like working his way up the ladder. And I've seen it firsthand. A lot of that is communication based because it's figuring out, I mean, I've literally seen him, you know, go to a fly date somewhere, hop off the plane, have to play something in town, have a Broadway gig the next morning and then fly out the next night, you know, for something else. And that takes a lot of communication and scheduling. And when the character thing is in place, like I know that, I mean, the other guy that plays with me, um, Chris, yeah, that was a Landon introduction. And so like, just, it makes it so much easier for the artist having People like I know at this point, which is this is going back to another reason why I left Nashville is that like I've got I feel like I have the relationships with the players now to even if where you or Chris can't do something like I I would trust without question whoever y'all were to to recommend. And so that the access is there because that network is strong. Absolutely. And and Chris, if you're watching this, you're you're a homie like you're you're really awesome. We love you. We love (laughs) you. We love you, Chris. Chris, Chris Dunkley. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> go look up Chris on the show. Had to go at the name drop. Uh, and then I guess I just have one more question. So you've been out here for about a month, out of Nashville, that is. Uh, what have you – this might even have some overlap with not the last question but the one before, but what are some things you've kind of learned about yourself since since moving out? It's a good question. Before I answer that, I'll never hear the end of it from Ethan Standard if I don't mention his name. <laughs> <laughs> and James Yardley, so – on the chance that y'all watch this, we love y'all as well. <laughs> That's, I um, love you guys. <laughs> yeah, Ethan plays drums for me. James plays keys and bass and does a little bit of everything. But um, anyway, yeah, so what I've learned about myself, one thing that I've learned about myself at this point in my life is that if I think I'm going to like something, I should probably act on it and give it a shot. Um, the first Three years I was in Nashville, I lived with a few other guys, like just a standard roommate situation. We were all really good friends. And on the tail end of those three years, kind of on the end of COVID, we were like five deep in a four-bedroom house, and I was just not – I had kind of aged out of that stage of my life, and I was like, I really want to live by myself. Yeah. So the last two years I was in Nashville, I did have my own place, and I loved it. Like it was really, really great for me. So I thought I was going to like it. I really ended up liking it. And then once I was like, you know what, I think I could go do like be way out in the country and kind of isolate. Um, so I decided to to act on that, and I've I've loved it. So that's one thing I've learned about myself is that if I do kind of feel something, it's not that you always trust your gut or just make it like you trust your emotions, but through thinking through that and, and being diligent in the way that you approach things, if you think that it's time to – to make a change, at least for me, then I, I try to act on that. Um, I've also, another thing that was confirmed is my creativity just kind of thrives when I'm alone. Like I have to have the alone time in order to like make sense of what's going on up here. And it is good to have stuff like, you know, like with Landon coming down and like being able to offer help on guitar parts and playing on certain things. But in order for me to be most efficient, at least to get to that point that um, I do well when I'm alone because I really have to, for the stuff that I want to write and the music I want to make and the content I want to make, it takes a good bit of uh, planning and like making sense of my thoughts. So Absolutely. Yeah. And what better place to do it than, you know, when you're out in the country and you don't really have any other distractions really. It's really cool. Yeah. I mean... you know, Landon has figured out since being here for the last 
uh, just 24 hours, hours right. or so, yeah, that, like, there's there's really not much phone service at the house. So, like, you can't you can't watch Netflix. Like, we don't really have TV. Yeah. Um, not a whole lot to, to distract you and that there's a certain beauty in, like, just simplifying everything um, in order to be, like, as maximally creative as possible. Yeah, he does have, like, five Mark Wahlberg movies, but... I'm not but even... the TV doesn't work. I bought the four. I bought the Mark, the uh, Mark Wahlberg four piece from the five dollar bin at Walmart, and then I got home. The DVD player doesn't work. Rip, <laughs> man, that's tough. Well, I think that's uh, that's going to be all for today. But if you uh, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, I'll be posting more content, maybe more interviews, maybe more advice. I'm going to probably start kind of branching out and doing some different things with this channel but john hart thank you for agreeing to do this and for letting me come down and stay here this has been a, a real pleasure yeah thanks for having me and i will throw this in there if you are an artist um if you're in nashville or elsewhere or if you need anybody to play on anything landon does a bunch of stuff from the house as well so please consider hiring him i use oh, him man, i mean you. most of my stuff that is on spotify landon's hand is man, thank in, you in some way for that i appreciate that all right. Cool. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Stay tuned for more.